Millions of years have passed since our ancestors roamed this earth, and we've learned much about them including archaeological and anthropological discoveries from which we were able to draw so many scientific conclusions. We know we have less hair, walk straighter and have better developed facial features than our Neanderthal, Homo erectus and Homo sapien heritage but what other factors have affected our evolution and adaptation? Here are some surprising insights into the lives of the early humans. Homo sapiens, the ancestors of modern man, originated in Africa. The out-of-Africa theory suggests that our ancestors left the continent and migrated to Europe and Asia. In doing so, they began replacing earlier examples of the human species, the Homo erectus. This migration took place approximately 80,000 years ago. What is interesting to note is that the Homo erectus upright human had actually followed the exact same route from Africa to Eurasia over 1 million years ago. Looks like Homo sapiens weren't the first to get this idea. Homo sapiens has only had a culture for less than 50,000 years. Many anthropologists now believe that early humans probably did not develop a culture until around that time. When we consider that the mitochondrial Eve theory suggests that we are all descended from one East African woman who lived about 200 to 150,000 years ago, it is shocking. Homo sapiens evolved over 150,000 years ago, around the time of mitochondrial Eve, the most recent common maternal ancestor of people currently on Earth. This means our species hung around for a really long time before we developed art, symbolic communication, ornaments, and bone tools. Pre-cultural humans did have sophisticated toolkits and fire, but anthropologists believe that they didn't invent language until a cultural explosion. Early humans have incredibly low genetic diversity. Humans are among the least genetically diverse species, mostly because we probably descended from a small group of early humans who lived in East Africa. Population geneticists describe genetic diversity with a measure called effective population size. Basically, effective population size is how many people you would need to reproduce the genetic diversity of our full population. For humans, this number is really low and hovers around 15,000 individuals. It is kind of crazy when you consider that actual population size is 7 billion. If compared to mice, some species of them have an effective population size of 733,000. The human population decreased 80,000 years ago. About 80,000 years ago there was a drastic reduction in the size of the human population. Archaeologists are still not 100% sure what caused the decline, but it definitely wasn't pretty. Some say there may have been a massive volcanic eruption that filled the sky with millions of particles of ash, blocking the sun's heat for many years and in so doing created freezing temperatures that would have severely affected life and population growth on Earth at the time. Our ancestors were more developed than you expect. During this time our ancestors were small-brained ape men that many assumed survived off what they could find, food that the land produced or the meat that came from animals that had already died from natural causes or had been left behind by other larger predators. But the discovery of hunting and eating tools suggest our ancestors maybe have been more intellectually developed than originally thought. Fire As we know, there are a few things that set us apart from our animal counterparts these include walking on two legs, creating and using stone tools, and being able to manage the natural element of fire. Evidence of fire being used as a tool came from archaeologists' discovery of Stone Age flint tools, which were used to both create fire and for scraping and cutting meat. We may have Neanderthal genes. Neanderthals are our closest extinct human relatives. Our well-known, but often misunderstood ancestors lived in Europe and Asia as early as 200,000 years ago until about 30,000 years ago. While the Neanderthals' appearance was slightly similar to ours, they were shorter and stockier with angled cheekbones, prominent brow ridges, and wide noses. These qualities were important for survival in Europe's cold climate and in order to hunt big animals for food. Though sometimes thought of as barbarians, scientists have discovered that Neanderthals in fact used tools, buried their dead and had control over fire. Homo sapiens always evolve. Human evolution is the extended process of change that suggests humans originated from ape-like ancestors. Scientific evidence shows that the physical and behavioral traits shared by all people stemmed from these ancestors and evolved over an extended period of time. Our species, as suggested by many, will continue to evolve in response to our living conditions different food, 
geographical and environmental changes, the advent of modern technology and of course the amalgamation of our different races. Different types of food allowed us to evolve. One of the primary factors of evolution is the food we consume. In the past, after traveling far distances and adapting to new locations, our ancestors' diet changed according to what food was available to them. Their diet initially consisted of nuts, seeds, fish, insects, and small animals providing the foundation that helped evolve our brain and develop our intelligence. This resulted in early humans creating advanced tools and using fire, which helped the evolution train keep on chugging. Our fists have constantly evolved to give a punch. Considering our faces have evolved in order to receive a punch to the face it makes sense that the part of our body used for delivering the punch would have had to evolve as well. The notion that evolution shaped our hands, not for dexterity, but to form fists, recently emerged from a study of anatomical changes in humans. The study suggests that at about the same time we started walking upright, our hands became short and square with opposable thumbs. This change has always been recognized as a means for tool manipulation, but recent studies suggest the ability to form a fist was actually an evolutionary step to help to deliver a punch when fighting. The human face evolved to withstand a punch. However, a million years ago, battles and fist fights were commonplace, and research suggests the battles between humans could end up being pretty brutal. Therefore it makes sense that our faces would have evolved in order to take a punch to the face. Clothes. While exact dates are always difficult to come by, studies have found out when our human-like ancestors began using the skin of animals to keep them warm. The need to do so may have arisen sometime after losing a large portion of body hair. Scientists estimate the time at which human began wearing clothes at around 1 million years ago. This time frame was decided by examining factors such as genetic skin coloration of our ancestors at around this time. 